What could happen in that area? According to communities, Laclede County could lose millions in sales. It could lose 1,200 people from its population. Under the most drastic cuts from the Army, the fort would lose 3,900 personnel. It's all part of a national Army restructuring as it looks at needs and demands over the next several years. Go ahead and pick it out. We'll send it out in the basket. When you think of a possible drawdown at Fort Leonard Wood, Dowd's Catfish and Barbecue probably isn't the first place to come to mind. Any special recipe? Of course. <laughs> you share it with us? Nope. Still here, nearly 40 miles away from the fort in Lebanon. Matt, do you want to run this real quick? Brian Hobbs' restaurant could take a significant hit. It's everything. <laughs> it's my entire life. We asked him what would happen without Fort Business. We'd make it, but we'd have to do some drastic cuts. We'd have to cut labor. Um, we might even go down to uh, not being open seven days a week. The most severe action by the Army would cut permanent personnel by about 40% at Fort Leonard Wood. You can just throw that fish in a basket, Ash. Which could mean fewer catfish dinners here. It's not just this place. The Lebanon Area Chamber of Commerce estimates that Laclede County would lose about $22 million if these full cuts go through. These numbers are uh, frightening. Frightening. Yeah, no, absolutely frightening. Daryl Pollock has called the Ozarks home since before he could legally drive. He says the maximum drawdown would be taking away more than troops. A major setback for a 10 year setback for a community and the size of uh, Lebanon and Clay County. He says Laclede County alone will lose more than 625 jobs. It's the best thing on the menu. Catfish. At Dowd's, even the customers realize what it would mean to have fewer personnel at the fort. I think it'd be a crying shame to hurt the economy quite a bit here. And the businesses that feed hungry soldier less than an hour down the road. Now this is not immediate and the Army has not made a final decision about what to do at the fort. The Army is supposed to carry out the drawdown nationally of about 80,000 active duty troops by the end of the 2017 fiscal year. State Representative Don Phillips says if his bill passes, more than 1,100 Missourians would be eligible to take their names off of the sex offender registry. He says some people simply don't belong on that list. He gave an example of someone who may be charged after relieving themselves on the side of the road. We also spoke with the mother of a sex abuse victim, we concealed her identity to protect that victim. We started our journey in 2011. That journey through court is one no mother wants to travel. He was five years old when it happened. Jeanette says her brother-in-law sexually abused her little boy. It took her son years of growing to admit what happened. And the 10 years that he kept in silence and what had happened to him, you know, no amount of jail time would have made that up. Now Jeanette wants to be sure the man who pleaded guilty to sexual misconduct won't get a chance to leave this map and the sex offender registry. Well, we're in desperate need of uh, reforming our sex offender registry. We've got hundreds and hundreds of, of people that uh, don't belong on there. State Representative Don Phillips of Kimberling City is sponsoring a bill in the Missouri House. It would create a tiered system for gauging offenses. Some offenders won't have to register. Others will have to wait 10 or 25 years to try to petition for removal from the registry. The worst offenders generally stay on for life. And so we agreed to a plea deal. Let's go back to Jeanette. She says the time in court wore on the family. They settled with a plea deal. Two counts of misdemeanor sexual misconduct. She says the original charges were statutory sodomy and molestation. The perpetrator got two consecutive nine-month sentences, and now she believes this bill could eventually let him off the registry. You know, the main reason that we wanted to do this was so there couldn't be another hidden monster in a family. All you would have to do is Google his name and see that you know, he was a registered sex offender, and that's what we wanted to make sure it didn't happen to another family. If this law passes and solely based on the charges, Jeanette's brother-in-law could petition to be taken off the registry in 10 years. Now, Jeanette says she also wouldn't want victims to have to relive the experiences by having to appear again when someone is trying to be removed from the registry. Now, Phillips says victims would not have to come forward again under his bill. Now, the House has considered several similar proposals in the past, and there are a few more this year. The bill we examined here has cleared one committee and still must make it through the House Rules Committee before going to the House floor. And we will continue to follow that. Thank you. Crossing at Campbell, downtown is on the list. City planners say construction on the one on Glenstone is also a possibility and Springfield is doing more cost share partnerships with BNSF and MoDOT. The aim is to get these projects completed more quickly and improve safety.
one of the supports of the economy, moving masses of goods and materials across the country, not intersecting with our lives until they intersect with our roads. Drivers who crossed the tracks at National and Division had cross words about the bumps and holes. I gotta shift my car over to one side of the lane or the other just to keep from bottoming out on the front end. Now, less than a year later, completely smooth, it wasn't rough, you know? It wasn't like hitting a ramp or anything like that. And the original estimate for this project here at National was for it to cost about $280,000, with the railway paying about $3.50 for every dollar that the city spent. Economic growth. City planners and BNSF met to talk about future projects in the previous year. 2012 included the changes at National and Division, as well as Lone Pine and Packer Road. Principal planner Mike McPherson says the city is planning 13 construction projects at crossings you would drive over, up from four in 2012. Made some, I think, some very valuable and continuing improvements that are a benefit uh, to the community in terms of traffic congestion and flows and safety. Well, I believe it when I see it. That was last year. This year, drivers are already feeling the changes on the tracks. McPherson says the city is also looking to make some safety upgrades at tracks where there are a high number of what are called near misses. Plans also call for a bridge over the tracks near Chestnut and 65. Crews already completed a similar project on 60 and 65. According to the city, the money for some of the cost share projects comes from an eighth cent transportation. I expect to see the system of getting health care change in this country. As far as this year, 2013, there are new rules, but most Americans probably won't notice major changes. Mama Jean's Natural Market in Springfield likes to think it's doing its part. Mama Jean's really changed my life and changed my lifestyle. To keep customers and employees healthy by offering healthful foods and insurance plans for full-time workers. I uh, had worked in kitchens for years and had an unhealthy diet. Just ask the company's marketing coordinator, Amy Harmon. And so when I went to my job at Mama Jean's, like I really wanted to make a change and they helped facilitate that. And what's going through the minds of the people who run this market is similar to what other businesses are thinking about upcoming changes under the health care law known as Obamacare. We do expect changes at that time and we're preparing for them, but we're not exactly sure what they will be. Well, I think there's a lot of uncertainty in the minds of business owners and they're trying to get information. Partner with the accounting firm BKD, Jamie McDonald, says the biggest thing for businesses this year is to prepare for next year. In 2013, they need to assess whether or not they're going to be required to provide health insurance to their employees. And that's basically to do a calculation to determine whether or not they have 50 full-time employees or not. Also, those virtual marketplaces known as health exchanges start this year in October. It works a lot like a grocery store. The idea is to have the different insurance companies competing for your business and offering the best price. Of course, this is all online. Navigators are going to be hired, so you'll be able to do that telephonically, but those folks have to be hired yet, and they have to be trained yet. And again, we're eight months from implementation of the exchanges. Vice President of Advocacy at Mercy in Missouri, Mike Peters, is watching the new law. How we get insurance, where we get it from, will change quite a bit over the next two years. New parts of the law kicking in this year include a tax on medical devices, an increase in Medicare taxes for those making $200,000 or more, limits to medical flexible spending accounts at $2,500 a year, and boosts to some Medicaid payments, raising them to higher Medicare rates for this year and next. So is the health care law achieving its goals? I think the jury's still out. I think that uh, the next year to 18 months will will really determine that. Uh, and it's, it's not so much, I mean, the, the finances are complicated enough. I don't profess to be an expert about those. But the, simply getting everything up and running. The big question marks remain cost and coverage. That's because some essential parts of the law haven't started yet. One question, if businesses pay more in insurance or penalties, will they pass those costs along to you? Hospitals are going to see a reduction in some payments this year. Peter says the expansion of Medicaid was supposed to help offset that. Now in states like Missouri, that expansion is uncertain. And then there's the question of costs of premiums. One thing the health care law doesn't do is cap premiums. 
Now, Peter says what it does do, though, is limit the percentage of those costs insurance can use for profit. And a survey from the Kaiser Family Foundation found employer-sponsored family premiums rose in 2012, and they increased faster than wages. However, the foundation considered the increase moderate in historical terms. Countries can print money, they can take loans, and also loan to other nations. And they can even outgrow debt. The ideas can seem abstract. Tonight, we look at the numbers like a family would to try to help you relate. The numbers are monumental. This is a visualization that comes close to what the national debt is today. Some groups are trying to bring the numbers down to something more recognizable. I think that we're in a lot of trouble. You know, if, if this were a household, if, if this were just a family, my family, your family, anybody's family, yeah, you'd be in big trouble. That's Drury Accounting student Brad Ray. We have to exercise fiscal responsibility. We have to, so, um, you know, I believe that the federal government should have to do the same thing. He's reacting to some numbers we showed him. Oh, yeah, you may have seen emails or Facebook posts with figures similar to this. This is one from a Tea Party group. It aims to make the government's debt and deficits look like a home budget. We looked over the numbers with a couple of economists, got data from the Treasury Department and St. Louis Fed, and came up with a similar chart based on the last fiscal year. Now just chop off a few zeros and the numbers look more like a household budget. Income, $24,500. That person or family would have spent more than thirty-five grand in a year taking on new debts. That kind of spending is like having $161,000 in credit card debt. Now consider this. Congress is looking at sequestration budget cuts, which are considered dramatic. If they go through, it would only cut this household spending by $1,000 this year. Ooh. Cut down on it. Steve Walton is getting his taxes done. But I've worked hard to earn it, and I don't know where it's going. Could you live on that? Would that work? That much debt? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Walton is a groundskeeper at Evangel University. We asked Ray if this was an individual. How are we looking? You'd be in terrible shape. The, the two are they're, they're similar in that they're using you know the words debt and deficits and things like that, but that's kind of where the comparison basically ends. The director of the Missouri Bureau of Economic Research at Missouri State University, David Mitchell, cautions the debt of a government is much different than that of a family. So when you look at the balance, when you look at the, the net you know holdings, it, it's actually not as, as bad as, as it seems, although it is a problem that needs to be addressed, but it's not like, oh my gosh, the whole economy is going to collapse tomorrow. So here's a look at the national debt, more than $16 trillion. If you look here, though, nearly $5 trillion of that the government owes within itself through programs such as Social Security. Now, the more than $11 trillion here that's left is held by the public, and a lot of that is owned by taxpayers, corporations, and others. The other half is owned by... Um, you know, China and Japan for the most part. So they've lent us money, but we've also lent them money too. For every dollar in foreign claims, the U.S. has 85 cents in claims on other countries. Still, U.S. taxpayer dollars in the future will then be going to other nations rather than staying here in U.S. communities. Now this becomes the basis for the next round of talks about spending. If the government doesn't act by March 1st, $1.2 trillion in automatic cuts are set to hit the federal government. Dr. Mitchell has concerns about ballooning entitlement spending. He believes that deserves more attention than cuts to discretionary spending, such as defense. And interest rates for the U.S. right now are cheap, sometimes cheaper than free when you take into account inflation. Some believe running a deficit and a debt isn't a bad thing. They believe investment is needed to kickstart the economy. Finally, one of the most important numbers in this that we haven't mentioned so far is gross domestic product, or the size of the economy. You have an idea now of the size of the debt, economists typically look at that figure, though, compared to GDP. Right now, the debt is around 100% of GDP, the highest level since the end of World War II.